Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white hardened scales deck, a plus one counter synergy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the new one mana hardened scales enchantment, saying if one or more plus one counters would be put on a creature we control, we get to put an additional plus one plus one counter on that creature instead. So a very similar effect to the one on Conclave Mentor, a two mana 2-2 two -two creature with that same ability, and when the Mentor dies we also gain life equal to its power. Of course an enchantment much more difficult for the opponent to interact with than a 2-2 two -two creature, but both of these reward us for incrementally adding counters to our various creatures, as we'll get an extra counter with each transaction, so it's better to get counters in slow increments, as opposed to having creatures that come into play with a ton of counters on them, as we'll only get one additional counter each time. So that's why we have so many effects that gradually add more counters to our creatures, and one of those is a Vivian Argbo Ranger, or 4 mana Planeswalker, starts out at 4 loyalty, and the plus 1 ability distributes 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters among up to 2 target creatures, and they also gain Trample until end of turn. So this is perfect for incrementally adding counters to our team, and Trample also very relevant once we start making huge creatures that we don't want getting chum blocked. And then the minus 3 gives us access to a bit of removal, saying a creature we control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. And then the minus 5 doesn't come up very often, as we're typically happy to keep plussing, but we can potentially search up a creature out of our sideboard and put it into our hand. And now in best of one we have a 7 card sideboard to choose from, including a copy of Scavenging Ooze as Graveyard Hate. We also have two copies in the main deck, just a nice tool to have access to, especially in grinding matchups where lots of creatures end up dying, as Ooze will pick up a ton of plus one counters, potentially gain life against burn decks, and of course Graveyard Hate always useful. We've got Knight of Autumn, which can destroy artifacts or enchantments, can also come into play with a few plus one counters or gain life. Good Questing Beast to take out opposing Planeswalkers, can also be useful against Fog Effects. We've got Shifting Ceratops against Blue Decks, Yasharn against Sacrifice Decks, Thrak Dusk if we need to gain 5 life right away, and then Verger's Gear Hulk, a nice curve topper, if we have 5 mana, can distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among any number of target creatures we control when it enters a battlefield, so that's another great ability to potentially have a Conclave Mentor or Hardened Scales to go with. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we do need some early acceleration with Lenor Elves, perfect for ramping into our Vivian ahead of schedule. Then we've got only two copies of Pelt Collector, a very synergistic creature in a plus one counter deck. The main issue is that we don't have a lot of large creatures that will grow the Pelt Collector when they enter the battlefield, but it's still a nice sequence to go turn one Pelt Collector, turn two play Conclave Mentor, and then the Pelt Collector will pick up two plus one counters right away, and as soon as it has three or more counters on it, then it also gains Trample, which is always nice. We've got two copies of Swarm Shambler, a 0-0 that enters a battlefield with a plus one counter on it, and then whenever a creature we control with a plus one counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, we get to make a 1-1 insect token, and we can pay a mana and tap Shambler to put a plus one counter on it, so that it also benefits greatly from Hardened Scales and Conclave Mentor. Then Wildwood Scourge is more of a 2-drop that we can play for X equals 1, entering the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and then whenever one or more counters are put on another non-Hydra creature we control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Wildwood Scourge, so it will passively start picking up more counters. We always want to put counters on other creatures other than the Scourge, otherwise the ability of course won't trigger, and then it will just passively get very large, at some point we can maybe give a Trample with Vivian to attack for the win. Then we've got nice removal with Dromoka's command, a 2-mana instant, and the modes we're typically going to use is to put a plus 1 counter on a creature we control, and then a creature we control fights another creature we don't control, can also use it to make the opponent sacrifice an enchantment, or prevent all damage target instant or sorcery spell would deal this turn, can potentially come up against burn spells or damage-based sweepers. Then we've got our two copies of Scavenging Ooze, and then Luminarch Aspirant is also awesome in this deck. A 1-1 creature, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control. It's another great way to incrementally add counters to the team, and benefits from the hardened skills and mentor. Then at 3 mana we've got 3 copies of Oran Reef Ooze, a 2-2 creature that when it enters puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on any target creature we control, and whenever the Ooze attacks we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each attacking creature with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so another way to incrementally add more counters to the team. 
and then Rishkar Pima Renegade, a 2-2 legendary elf druid that when it enters the battlefield puts a plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures, and each creature we control with a counter on it has the ability to tap to add green mana, so that's another way to increase her mana to potentially cast Vivian or activate Scavenging Ooze. And then of course just upon entering the battlefield adding two counters can potentially translate into a lot of extra damage with a mentor or hardened scales in play. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward, we've got four copies of Temple Garden, four Sun Petal Grove, four of the Green White Pathway, a singleton copy of Overgrown Farmland from the new Innistrad Midnight Hunt, then eight basic force and only a single basic planes as we need a lot of green mana for Vivian, also for activating Scavenging Ooze. So, no collected company, as you'll have noticed, but that's also because we have more cards that we can't hit with company, like Hardened Scales, creatures like Wildwood Scourge are a number with company as well, so we're trying a slightly different build than some of our previous plus one counter synergy decks that may be featured, the Winding Constrictor and Collected Company. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand. Hardened Scales into Aspirants. Make a 3-3 right away. Good command as interaction. Opponents mono green so far, looks like an elf deck. Don't think I need to kill Lenor Elves just yet. Might be able to kill one of their lords like an Archroot with Dromoka's command instead. And then for now, I guess Orin Reef Ooze. Smash for seven. And next turn I might want to put the counter from Aspirant onto the Ooze, so the Ooze will also grow itself. So we could be presenting Lethal next turn, as we see Archdruid. That's probably not going to save them. So, Elves. I could even fight with Elves if I wanted to. have a lot of options. But I guess this is fine. Opponent has to jump. Our opponent gives up instead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's kind of awkward with double Sun Petal Grove coming into play tapped, so I'll have to mulligan. This is better. Although it's tough to put something on the bottom, it might be Vivian, and then just go Harden Skills, Mentor, Ooze, and hope that's good enough. Pick up more plus one counter synergies later. My mana base is actually quite nice. Alright, and Aspirin, certainly a nice draw. Facing a Triome. Could be a Just Guy Control deck or Creativity deck. So, probably still Aspirant here over Mentor. And might be met by a Lightning Helix. Alright, nothing so far. Steam Vents untapped. And Archmage's Charm actually stealing our Hardened Scales. Alright, nice. Well, how do we progress from here? I can um, just play the Ooze. Question is, do I want to potentially get the Ooze out of 3 damage range, or do I just go all in on this Aspirant? I think just putting more counters on Aspirant right now is fine. The one potential issue is like a Prismari command could deal two to the ooze. So putting an extra counter on it would make it survive. They didn't play a turn to Lightning Helix, so that doesn't seem like a concern. So maybe I should go one counter on ooze and one on aspirants. And then 
And next turn I get to go Mentor plus another Aspirant for a ton of damage. So your opponent pretty much needs a board wipe. Iteration to go digging. So I still don't know for a fact if they're more of a typical control deck or a just guy combo deck. Because if they're control, I don't want to run face first into a Wrath of God necessarily. So I could just attack with what I have currently. Which would be 7, 8, 9, 10 damage. If I play Mentor, could I present lethal? I would get two counters from Aspirants. 6, 9, plus 4 more, so that's 13. So if I go Mentor and Aspirant and both resolve, I would have lethal. Let's try it. Although they seem to be holding something here. Right, we'll move to combats. Smash. And that's 15. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand, so we're a bit light on plus one counter synergies. But uh, double elves, double hardened scales could lead to a very explosive start as soon as we pick up anything that produces extra counters. Turn one mountain, and there's Rishkar. So I'm going to wait on playing Rishkar until we get a couple Hardened Scales out there. So I could go Elves, double Hardened Scales. Seems fine. And then if I draw land, I could even play Scourge for one before playing Rishkar. As we see, turn to Burning Tree from our opponent, so an aggressive red deck. And a robber. Alright. So not a bad turn two. And there's a lane I wanted. So scourge for one. And then Rishkar counter on himself and a counter on the elves. Which will grow the scourge quite a bit too. Alright, not a bad turn three. Anax plus Amber Cleave could still be a concern, of course. And there's Oran Reef Ooze. So, can play the Ooze, put a counter on either itself or the Lenor Elves. Probably fine to put it on itself. Grow the Scourge, and then Scourge. Rishkar. And elves could attack. See 17. This is presenting lethal, so they'd have to chump. Am I dead to an Ember Cleave on the way back? It's gonna be close, but I think I make this attack. I would be happy if they traded Annex. Alright, they didn't trade, they kept all the red devotion. So could see a cleave here, do quite some damage. Fervent Champion, attack with all, so cleave is incoming. Cleave on Annex puts it to 9 Devotion. 10 power, so that's 20 Trample, so we're not surviving it. Um, So this still has me taking 15 trample, can chump an emissary, but I think that's still uh, game over here. Alright, looks like they actually didn't have it. Sweet, 
On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. Turn one. Probably still Pelt Collector. Turn two scales, turn three Rishkar. This way if we draw like a Conclave Mentor, I get to grow the Pelt Collector right away. Hardened Scales first, could maybe play it better if we draw like a Wildwood Scourge I want to play on turn two. Uh, elves is not bad. So next turn I could already play Vivian. Bone fetched planes. Some sort of Mardu deck. Ooh, a reanimator deck. So starting to plus Vivian to eventually get scavenging ooze is gonna be quite important. So I think uh, that means playing Vivian now and plusing. And then I might even keep Pelt Collector on defense to block the Priest. Because I don't want Vivian losing any loyalty and being unable to get to Ooze. Alright, Bone Shard sadly kills our Planeswalker and our opponent discarded. Sarah's Emissary, which they can already reanimate, so... Yeah, it's gonna be hard to beat. Uh, let's see, we do have... ways to deal damage, but they all involve creatures. Dromoka's Command is a creature fighting, so that doesn't kill the Emissary. And... If we play another Vivian, that's also the creature dealing damage. So I don't think I have any answers to Sarah's Emissary, my deck. So I think that's game over, sadly. Well, a nice early Sarah's Emissary for our opponents. If I had a bigger creature in play, I could have considered using the fight from Vivian to just kill the priest instead, but that wasn't really an option for us. Dromoka's commands, as we can see here, says creature we control fights a creature we don't control, so that's not a way to kill a Saros Emissary, but I guess I can show it anyway. Plus one counter fights. And that's going to be game. Yeah, we would have even been able to get a scavenging ooze, but Punt was just too fast with a turn 2 priest. Against a turn 4 and burial rites, we would have been fine. And there we see the burial rites discarded, bone shards. Proving to be quite valuable. Alright. Protection from creatures means we can't even deal any damage to them, so no hope of racing. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a Keeper. Mantra into Rishkar is a fine start. We've got ooze for a bit of life gain and potential graveyard interaction, especially for up against another reanimator deck. Turn one, ley line of anticipation and of sanctity. Okay. So not exactly sure what our opponent's up to. Think it's still mentor here. Opponent foretells. Is that gonna be a Doomscar? Could very well be. I think I still play Rishkar and make him use it. And then Scavenging Ooze at least will have a bit of food. Alright, it's gonna be Solemnity, so I guess. 
that's what they're doing instead. And Solemnity actually stops all our plus one counters too, besides comboing with nine lives. So yeah, that's a pretty rude card to face when playing this deck, I would say. I'll hit for eight and then... I mean, if they have nine lives we lose, they might still have a Doomscar. So I don't feel like I need to add anything to the board. It's gonna be a Mind Stone, still leaves three mana for an instant speed Doomscar thanks to the Ley Line. So we'll attack and see what happens. Yep. Alright, time to play some underpowered creatures out. Uh, I guess I'll play my 2-2 two -two and my other 2-2. Two -two. So we still have a two-tron clock. Gives the opponent a lot of time to find nine lives. Now we do have Dromoka's Command as well as Vivian. Although, let's see. Yeah, I guess Vivian getting a Knight of Autumn, for instance, could still be an answer to the combo. Dromoka's Command makes the opponent sacrifice an enchantment, but he can just sacrifice one of the weaker ones. So that doesn't necessarily help. Hit for four. And then I don't think I need to play Lenor Elves out. Is her opponent still digging? And they're gonna scry, leaving one mana. That's not much. And her opponent explodes. Wow. Good lucky to survive here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Got a fine hand. Elves into... Could play Mentor first, could play Ooze, we'll see. Facing Murfolk, alright, so... Dromoka's command is gonna be important. Silver Guild turn 2, revealing Merfolk Trickster, a good one to know about. Could potentially remove the Mentor's ability to give extra counters. Ooh, Rishkar. I could still play a Mentor here. And then, how does my sequencing look like next turn? I'll have 4 mana. Could go Rishkar, which if it puts a counter on Mentor, it can also tap for mana. And then still Dromoka's command. I think that's the play. Opponent's attacks. I'll take it. Now if they keep up Murfolk Trickster, then they can potentially mess with that plan a little bit by targeting Conclave Mentor. So if that's the case, do I change my play? Because if I Rishkar, they target Mentor, I lose out on a lot of plus one counters. So I could just play another Mentor here, for instance, keep up Dromoka's command. And then next turn, maybe even Rishkar plus Ooze. So I'll pass. Right, opponent plays a trickster. That's fine. I think I keep commands for Lord, although they went for the elves. So I won't be able to play command. Hmm. Do I still save command for Lord or do I fire it off now? Just getting the extra counters on Mentor is already kind of worth it here. 
So... And then we'll fight Trickster, I guess. Alright, so... Next run we're looking at Rishkar plus Ooze and try to overpower them, even if they have a couple lords in hand. Interesting attack. Think I still block here. So what if I go here and here? Then I can still play Ooze. And probably smash for five. And then next turn we should have plenty of uh, damage on the way back. Even if they double lord here, I think we'll be fine. No attacks. They can't even cast Collected Company with their current mana. So let's turn our creature sideways, maybe keeping the elves back. In case we need some blockers. But this is a lot of damage with uh, Ooze Trigger and Double Mentor. So are they gonna target the Ooze? That's a little bit too late. Another trickster. And yeah, they probably wanted to target Mentor to prevent the extra counter ability from triggering. So they're still going to be in trouble here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine start. Collector into Mentor gives us a 3-3 Pelt Collector right away. And double Aspirants, also great, especially if we can double 2-drop on turn 4, that would be ideal. Facing another green-white deck with Sithis on Enchantment deck. Not exactly what we wanted to see, but... Gotta hope to dodge Solemnity, I guess. Alright, Curse of Silence. Naming... Not even sure what they would name. Conclave Mentor. Not a bad choice. It's gonna be a Rishkar instead. And then I could go... One on Mentor, one on Rishkar, so we have more mana creatures to play Vivian next turn. Or I could put both on the creatures that can attack. I think I spread them out. And then next turn I could tap Pelt Collector for mana, play Vivian, plus... Sterling Grove. Could eventually get Solemnity. Or could also protect Solemnity if we do play Vivian here. Also have the option of double Aspirant in case that's better. I think Vivian still the play. Also plays better around Potential Wrath, which they could still be playing. And then, and I will let's see, these are going to be two counters each, so 6, 12, Trample. I might actually have Lethal here. I get out of the way if I they can Shump Pelt Collector, take 12. Alright, sweet. 
So dodge the bullet there. The enchantment matchup can be pretty tough if they get going, but had a nice aggressive start. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Elves into Mentor into Vivian, hopefully. Facing a Jeskai deck. So most likely control or a combo. And we'll spread out to plus one counters here. Uh, Unholy Heat actually kills Mentor before we get the extra counters. They could have waited for me to target Mentor and Elves with one counter each and then killed Conclave in response would have resulted in a smaller Lenor Elves. Alrighty, so... I guess there was no real need to shock there, but that's alright. Play... Maybe Aspirants. In case of an Archmage's Charm, they might counter it and then Mentor. Right, mystical dispute I can just pay for. So I think I do. Keep plussing for now. I can maybe eventually get a shifting ceratops. And then putting an extra counter on Aspirin saves it from Prismari Command. Still dies to Lightning Helix. Yeah, I guess I'll save it from Prismari Command. Our anger of the Gods also works. So... I think I still wait on minus 5 ink and maybe get Gear Hulk next turn if the Mentor survives to deal a ton of damage. Right, the fairy can maybe tug Vivian. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Tugs the Lunar Elves instead. Reverse. Okay. I gotta be close to lethal with the Gear Hulk here. So that's two counters on the elves turns into three, two counters on mentor turns into three. So that's seven plus four is eleven. So yeah, I think that does it. Just double checking four plus seven. Yep. I'm not sure you can handle what I have planned. All right, sweet. Get to see the Gear Hulk in action too here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand is a little on the slow side. Facing a Lurus deck. So if I draw land three, this could work out. It's still kind of clunky with no early creature to fight with command. I think this is a mulligan. Alright, this is a little better. No real interaction though, but uh, double mentor, scourge, couple of good threes. What to put on the bottom is now the question. Could be wildwood scourge. And then just go mentor into mentor. If I don't draw land three, if I do mentor into maybe Rishkar or the ooze. Feels like the Scourge is going to be difficult to kind of fit in. All 
Uh, looks like the black white aura deck, so probably not a great matchup if they have a turn to spirit dancer here. Running mentor into dead weight is also gonna hurt, but I think I still gotta make the play here. It's gonna be a Myers Grasp instead. Alrighty, so Belt Collector into Mentor looks good. And next turn, hopefully get some extra counters going. There's a Spirit Dancer, so it's gonna be hard to beat unless we find a Dromoka's Command right now. So I can Rishkar into Ooze, no attacks. Might be the play. Opponent's gonna make a huge spirit dancer. And we somehow need to go wide, but those extra tokens are also gonna make that difficult. Double spirit dancer now. Vigilance so they can play offense and defense, and now even Dromoka's command probably is gonna be too late even if we make him sack an enchantment. So take eight. And just a land, so. Turn my creature sideways and we'll see what happens. But I'm assuming I'm dead on the way back. Thought seems to have a look. And Amogus's favor should do it. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with the Keeper. Elves into maybe turn two Hardened Skills plus Aspirants. We've got Ooze for Graveyard Hate. Going turn one Hardened Skills, turn to Aspirants. Could potentially line up better in the face of early removal, but. I think I still give myself the chance for the most explosive start. With her bloom commands and yeah. Put on sure is reanimating. So glad to have scavenging ooze. And then not gonna play it just yet. But can go hard on skills shambler maybe. And then Currently, the earliest they could reanimate is maybe turn 4, but there's no Imburial Rites yet. And there's no Priests. Maybe see Priest now. Alright, it's gonna be a Witherbloom command to destroy Hardened Scales instead. So I'm not at risk of our opponents comboing me yet. So, I don't have to play Ooze yet. Could play Aspirant first. And 
And then I guess I'll start growing Shambler. Or I could grow Aspirin so it doesn't die to another Witherbloom command. And then I'll just grow the Shambler end of turn. And then next turn I'll probably play the Ooze. Right, there's the um, burial rites. Now I don't actually have to exile the unburial rights itself, since I can just exile the creature they target in response. And then I guess we'll grow Shambler here and smash. And that's not gonna work. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. So I've definitely had to face quite a few of these graveyard-based combo decks, and the matchup's typically not in our favor, as we don't have a whole lot of a graveyard interaction, and the opponent can typically combo off a turn or so before we can present lethal damage, unless we've got one of our more explosive draws. So happy to have a few copies of Scavenging Ooze in the main deck, could always try to add more if those graveyard decks become too popular, and then having Vivian to potentially tutor up an extra ooze is always nice too. So yeah, these plus one counter synergy decks have always been a thing in Historic, I always try to make them work since the decks are pretty interesting and fun to play, but I feel like now with hardened skills the deck can actually compete with some of the better decks out there in the format, and then having both Dromoka's Command and Vivian as main deck removal, that can potentially be very useful in creature matchups, take out your Elvish Archdruid or maybe a Krenko is key in those matchups, but then there's still very useful cards outside of creature matchups as a way to just provide additional plus one counters, so they're not necessarily that against combo and control, which is an important quality to have for interaction in best of one. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.